I'd like to reveal some of the greatest secrets in the Bible to you. Let's start by reading a short passage. As I read it, try to figure out what it's talking about. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Surely he took up our pain and carried our suffering. Yet we thought he was punished by God for something he had done. Rather, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the sin of us all. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. He was cut off from the land of the living. For the sin of my people, he was punished. The Lord makes his life an offering for sin. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life. He carried the sin of many. If you think this passage is about the crucifixion of Jesus, you're right. It's obviously about him. So what's so special about this passage? Are you ready? This passage is found in the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh, what we call the Old Testament. It was written 700 years before Jesus was born and 100 years before crucifixion was invented. How did that happen? I just read a shortened version of the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. I'd encourage you to carefully read the entire chapter for yourself. Most people don't know that the Hebrew Bible foretold the birth, death, resurrection, and ministry of Jesus Christ. Let's take a closer look and see how Isaiah 53 revealed the details of Jesus' life and ministry. Isaiah 53 verse 2 talks about Jesus' birth. The first part of verse 2 says this, He grew up before him like a tender shoot. This tells us that Jesus won't just appear out of nowhere as an adult. He will be born and grow into adulthood. The second part of verse 2 says, like a root out of dry ground. God was painting a word picture. Nothing grows in completely dry ground, yet this plant does. This is a picture of something that is impossible. It hints at the miraculous nature of Jesus' birth, his virgin birth. How do we know this? Look at Proverbs 5. It admonishes the reader to be sexually faithful to his wife. Pay attention to what water signifies in this passage. Proverbs 5, verses 15 through 18. Drink water from your own sister, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in the public squares? Let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice and the wife of your youth. What is water a picture of in this passage? It's a metaphor for sexual union. When it says drink water from your own sister, it's commanding the husband to be sexually faithful to his wife. Proverbs 5 makes it clear when it says, may your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. Water is used to symbolize the sex act. In Isaiah 53, when it says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. What is dry ground? It's ground that lacks water. Isaiah is telling us that Jesus will come from a womb that has never experienced sexual union. The phrase, like a root out of dry ground in Isaiah 53 too, is an allusion to Jesus' virgin birth. Isaiah 53 9 says that Jesus led a sinless life. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. This is a poetic way of saying that Jesus was blameless in both deed and word. He was perfect. In Isaiah 53, 5, it talks about Jesus' crucifixion, but he was pierced for our transgressions. When we look at Psalm 22, 16, it says the same thing, except it's being more specific about where he would be pierced. They pierced my hands and my feet. Psalm 22:16 was written 1,000 years before Jesus' birth and 600 years before crucifixion was even invented. When we look at Zechariah 12:10, it says similar things. Here God is speaking again. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him 
as one grieves for a firstborn son. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, the one for whom the Jews will mourn when they discover who he is. We see Jesus' death described in verses 7 through 9 in Isaiah 53. For example, verse 8 says, He was cut off from the land of the living. Yet, verses 10 and 11 discuss what Jesus will do after he's killed for the sins of the world. This is describing the resurrection without using that word. Listen to verse 11. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. The passage reveals that he will live again after he died. Isaiah 53 describes Jesus' resurrection 700 years beforehand. Verses 5, 6, 8, and 10 through 12 talk about Jesus taking away our sins by suffering in our place. Here's verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Substitutionary atonement was in the Old Testament. It's an Old Testament doctrine. Isaiah 53, 11 reveals that you must know Jesus to be saved. By his knowledge, my righteous servants will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. You must know and believe in Jesus to be justified in God's eyes. This is what Jesus said in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Put it all together. Isaiah 53 prophesied Jesus' virgin birth, sinless life, crucifixion, death, resurrection, suffering in our place to save us, and the need to believe in Jesus to be saved. Isaiah 53 is an amazing fulfilled prophecy about Jesus. Are you ready for another amazing mystery of the Bible to be revealed? Look at these short phrases in Isaiah 53. Verse 2, he grew up before him. He had no beauty. Verse 3, he was despised. Verse 4, he took up our pain. Verse 5, he was pierced for our transgressions. Who is he? Well, the beginning of the chapter gives us the answer. Let's go back to verse 1. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him. He had no beauty. He was despised. All of Isaiah 53 is about the arm of the Lord. The word he refers to the arm of the Lord. You could rightly reinsert this back into the text. The arm of the Lord was pierced for our transgressions. The arm of the Lord was crushed for our iniquities. The question you must ask is, who is the arm of the Lord? To find that answer, you need to go to the only other place in the Old Testament where that exact phrase is used. Isaiah 51 verses 9 and 10. Awake, awake, arm of the Lord, was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the deep, who made the road in the depths of the sea, so that the redeemed might cross over? What is Isaiah 51 verses 9 and 10 talking about? Who dried up the sea to let the Jews cross? It was God. God parted the Red Sea to save the Jews. Look at Exodus 14 verses 21 and 22. The Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry ground. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Lord God drove back the sea. God turned the sea into a road for the redeemed to cross over. Yet Isaiah 51 tells us the arm of the Lord parted the sea. The arm of the Lord is God. Isaiah 53 is about Jesus, who is the arm of the Lord who is God. Isaiah is telling us that Jesus is God. Isaiah is saying that God would be born of a virgin. God would live a sinless life. God would be crucified. God would die. God would resurrect. God would suffer in our place to save us. And God must be believed in as Jesus to be saved because God was pierced for our transgressions. God was crushed for our iniquity. By God's wounds, we are healed. Isaiah 53, 6 says, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. This means that we all 
have ignored God's commands and sinned against him. You must repent and believe in Jesus. Believe in the Lord and you will be saved. 